everybody. It's time once again for our Spartan Sports Report here on TV3. And Sam and I are happy to always welcome the Spartans uh, athletic director, CHS. Hi, Brent Duncan. How's everybody today? Glad, <laughs> Good to, to have, have you back. Today. Glad to be back. Yeah. Maybe we'll have another coach next week. Hmm? Have Maybe another we'll coach another next, week? next week? Okay. <laughs> All right. so, um, Your coach. Doing anything, uh, athletic director, this week? Is it a busy week? or? Yeah, we're trying to get more people to come and buy their tickets for the Lucas Oil game. They're twelve bucks here. If you wait till Saturday, it's fifteen. Yeah, twelve dollars for six years, six year olds and up. And if you wait till the door, it's fifteen at the gate. Mm -hmm. but of course, they're good for all day long. So, I think there's a misconception that it, you can't buy them. Anybody can buy them at any place because we're all going to put our money together and pool together, and <laughs> we split the profits at the end between all eight of sure, us. Sure. So right. Hopefully, yeah. there will be profits at the end. So. Well, we hope so, and maybe it's a great success. So it'll be every so often. Yeah, we, we've talked about doing it every so often just to give our kids the opportunity to play there. Sure. At least maybe once every four years. We'll see how that goes this time and if we all like it or we'll have to evaluate at the end. So. Right. Well, it's, it's a great experience for the kids. Oh, I think any time you can get them in those uh, major sports arenas. You know, mm -hmm. you, they play the state finals at Victory Field for baseball, and this year they did softball at Swinninger Stadium at at Lafayette, of course, the state finals of football are at the bowl. I mean, at Lucas Oil, and mm -hmm. um, just a good experience to get your kids on the field. Right. Some of them have never been there before, so it'll be a an eye opener when they walk in there for the first time. I uh, I don't think Mr. Judd's been in there before, so he's going. So it'll be a good experience. <laughs> I've for never him. been there for a game. I was there for a graduation, so I'm looking. It's looking been a big to graduation. It. Yeah, IUPUI. Yeah. So. <laughs> It'll be a good experience for our kids. Oh, it certainly will, right. Hopefully we'll come out and play well and get a win. And, right. We're uh, looking for a win. We're taking on Greensburg. They have a 1-1 one, one record. Uh, Spartans are still looking for that first win. Hopefully it'll hit this Saturday. That's the goal. We'll have everybody <laughs> hopefully back in uniform, and our two kids that had to sit out this past week will be back, and that'll help us. It's uh, one of our better defensive players, one of our linemen, and mm -hmm. one of our receivers. So yeah. that should help us in the long run. Well, hope so. Um, Greensburg, uh, they beat Shelbyville by a high score, but lost to Triton Central. Triton Central's pretty solid. That's kind of their bread and butter football the last few years. They've been really pretty good. And um, You know, Shelbyville, I don't know. I saw they got beat again pretty handily this past weekend, too. So, mm -hmm. But you just never know until you put them on and step That's out true. on the field on That's this right. time Saturday afternoon instead of Friday night. So be a different experience overall. Yeah, you usually don't have a Friday night off in, in high school football. Not typically. So, uh, <laughs> let's hope that bodes well for Saturday morning. Well, it's good to know that we'll have a full complement of kids playing again and, and everything. And, uh, yeah, you know, our numbers are up this year from the last couple of years, so that's a good sign. And mm -hmm. Our uh, JV's playing Franklin County tonight, which will be made up of our younger kids who didn't play in the varsity game and a lot of our freshman kids. So. We'll get a chance to see what they look like. They won their first game against Richmond last week, so hopefully it'll be two in a row for us. So. Well, that's a good sign. Hope so, too. Correct. Right. So. Um, Sam, Friday night, the Spartans sort of struggled a little bit. Tough night. Uh, Franklin County came in ready to play, as, mm -hmm. they, as they always do. Um, no love lost between the two teams <laughs> when, it, when it comes to just about any sport. Uh, yes. Always good, good competition, but uh, Franklin County – Noted for their football. It's a great rivalry, and um, they have they, they they have a good record going as as far as as football, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I was impressed with their kids. I thought uh, they were going to be a, a concern here in the conference. Mm -hmm. I thought uh, we might see some more people across the way from us. I was us, a little uh, surprised that we'd come up from Franklin County, although they uh, packed in a, a student section, which was pretty nice mm -hmm. there, but. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, I just thought we would see a lot more, being the close pro proximity. That right, I agree. And, and the, the that team. was a nice night for, for football. Right, we had yeah. rain early, but whether that kept some away, I'm not sure. But, but uh, um, Spartan, uh, Spartan Nation came out for sure, as <laughs> they always do. Right, right. Uh, it was little cheerleader night. Uh, these youngsters, what, kindergarten and... First grade kids? Probably kindergarten up to sixth graders. Okay. Maybe even then the middle school cheerleaders are out there as well. So yeah. it looked like there's about 100 and some of them out there on the field at one time. So <laughs> but it's a good time for the kids to get out there and, and the cheerleading coaches put a little camp on for two or three days and get them out on the field and let them cheer with the high school girls before the game started. Right. And 
get them back to their parents so they can sit in the stands and watch <laughs> the game as the game's going on. Then our middle school kids cheered with the mm -hmm. cheerleaders the first quarter. So it's a good experience and good time for all the little girls and stuff. Two more home games. Uh, they're special nights too, I know. Yeah, the, I won't get to September 27th. It's homecoming mm -hmm. uh, against Jennings County. And then the, the last home game is our senior night. It'll also be pink out night if you want to wear a pink out during October. So Yes. Try to find a special guest to flip the coin as we usually do. And, okay. You know, I'm sure there are people out there, but not everybody likes to always go out there and <laughs> be on the field flipping that for the pink out night. So, but uh, it's a hard time to think there's a month between our two home games since our next home game is truly this Saturday at Lutheran. That's Florida. right. So, right. Um, it'll be a while before we get back on the field here. So. And we only had four this year. This is the year for four instead yeah, of five. Yeah, next year games. us and Batesville have agreed to flip. Uh, our, we're going to Batesville this year and then. Uh, we're actually going to try and go back to them next year to balance out their schedule and our schedule. So from this point on, we'll have five each year, counting the scrimmage. So okay. we'll have a scrimmage and four home games, or we'll mm -hmm. have five complete home games. Okay. So that'll help us both out. It's just unfortunately every other year we'll end on the road back to back, and every other year we'll be home back to back. <laughs> so it works out in the long run. Right. It's better right. to have five and five than four and six, but we have a good scrimmage opponent in Monrovia, and it mm -hmm. wasn't worth losing them over who was going to host the very first year. So. Okay. But it's time to balance it back out a little and, bit. And um, we don't want to uh, look too far ahead, but we've been very fortunate to have that first sectional game uh, last several years, <laughs> and I'd like to continue that tradition as well. Well, yeah, I think it's been seven for seven since Coach Kelly's been here, so we'll find <laughs> out. Uh, I don't have to be the sectional financial manager this year since Muncie Central's coming in. Tom Lyons has graciously said he's done that for many years at Muncie Central, so I'll wash <laughs> my hands of all that paperwork for at least a year. But... Uh, and then, I don't know, we've had a little talk in the future that we'll go back to this, the old jamboree days like they used to have and have all eight schools in a conference do a jamboree for at one site and for at another site, and we'll use that money to help pay for stuff in the conference at the gate. So we started talking about that at the beginning of the year, so we'll see where that comes. We're not looking for next year, but maybe the following year after. So, um, From a uh, coaching and playing standpoint, is there an advantage to that over, over the – Scrimmage? There. Uh, it's been a while since we've had Jambri, you know, in the scrimmage, you got to run certain plays from certain goal line or for certain yard down, yard lines. But uh, talking in the Jambri, that one time you would automatically start on offense and then you just run your plays. And wherever you get to, you get to. There wouldn't be any kicking game, so I'm sure they'll probably start on the 20 or the 30. But then the next quarter to come out, you would start, start on defense. So it'd be a more of a more of a game-like situation than just running certain plays from certain yard lines. So. I think the kids would like it. I think the coaches would get more benefit from seeing what happens in mm -hmm. a, a true second down and seven when you get to try to sustain the driver, they're going to take over or whatever. When they, but I don't think there will be a kicking part of that. So we'll see how that pans out. Mm -hmm. TV3 works with media class out at CHS, and we have an interview that was done by a student, and he interviews one of the players of, of the Spartans, uh, Mitchell Blakely, and this was done before last Friday night's game, but we think you'll find it interesting from the uh, students out of CHS. This is Nathan Shaw, and this is SSN 10 and 1. Here we have Mitchell Blakely. He's going to answer some questions for us about the game tonight. Mitchell, what are you looking forward to about this game? Uh, I'm looking forward to getting that dub and bringing home the keg, and hopefully we have a good game. What do you predict your team's record to be this year? Um, I predict it. I think we can go 6 and 3. I mean, we really do look good this year. You know, I mean, it was not the best last year, but I, I think we've improved a lot. What is your reason for playing? Uh, I just love the game and love to hit people. What do you believe is the most underrated about the team? Probably our speed. We're actually really fast, and, you know, that's something good to have in the sport. What player do you look up to the most? I'd have to say Landon Serqua. You know, he's just a dog, and he's always looking to kill somebody on the field, and I just that's what I love the most about him. How far will the team go this season? I expect, honestly, a sectional championship. I mean, we do have the talent and the we're capable of it. Just have to do our jobs. And All right, that's one minute. Thank you, Mitchell, for joining us. Yeah, thank you. Kids do a pretty good job. We have a good TV school out of CHS. Yeah, it's the longest running one in the country as far as I know, but the kids do an outstanding job. And yes, they do. It's good to see them get out on the 
premises and do outside the studio interviews <laughs> and as on the spot or wherever you want to call it. Yes. Every now and then they show up where you're not expecting them. So uh, <laughs> you're not expecting to be on a TV interview for the day with anyone else. If they come and ask questions, it's like, okay. So, uh, Sometimes it's best that way. Yeah, you got to be able to do it by the seat of your pants at times and mm -hmm. be well versed enough to know what you're talking about. If not, you say, sorry, come back and see me tomorrow. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> Here's the uh, sports schedule for this week at CHS. Tuesday, golf at Richmond, junior varsity football at Franklin County, tennis on the CHS courts, the Spartans in South Dearborn, volleyball at Newcastle. On Wednesday, the volleyball team will be going to Union County. That's a 5.30 start. On Thursday, golf with Newcastle starting at 5 o'clock at Willowbrook Country Club. Boys soccer at Wapahani starting at 5. Tennis with Greensburg, 5 o'clock start, CHS courts. Also at 5, the Lady Spartans soccer will be at the CHS field against East Central. Saturday, Spartan football with Greensburg, opening game of the Southeastern Showdown at Lucas Oil Stadium. 12 o'clock noon kickoff, co-ed cross country at the East Central Invitational starting at 9 in the morning. Boys soccer at South Dearborn at 11, tennis at the Richmond Invitational at Nine o'clock. We had a couple of postponements uh, last week, did you? Have you made the new We're working dates? on dates. Okay. It's just hard in soccer, yeah, but the, uh, the JV football game is actually at home tonight because uh, Franklin County double booked their oh, okay. football field. So we're going to play the JV game Good. here, and then we're going to play Newcastle and girls soccer on Saturday at 10. So okay. we're working on Union County, and right now we've had no luck with uh, boys soccer in Newcastle, but Franklin County boys will probably be October 1st make-up date. Just trying to get them all squeezed in. That's a problem, isn't it? When, uh, when you well, have... the season's short, and when you play so many yes. times in a week, you don't want to play too many days in a row without getting the proper rest for mm -hmm. your kids. So, are there rules relative to that from the IHSA? Yeah, they try to limit to about three a week. That's so we try not to get past that. And we try to just think about who you're playing and the recovery time with your legs, and just such a short, compact season when you're talking mm -hmm. about basically the middle of August to the first of October, and you're getting 16 soccer matches in at those times. And a lot of recovery time for a lot of the kids who've got a lot of running to do in the middle of the field. So, Middle school sports this week, football Tuesday at Greenfield Central, volleyball Wednesday at Sunman Dearborn beginning at 5.30, Thursday at Newcastle at 5.30, the cross-country team Tuesday at Richmond at 5, uh, swimming and diving Thursday at Centerville at the 5.30 start. Here are the area football scores from last Friday. Rushville 0-2, lost to Newcastle, 39-9. Richmond 1-1, lost at Mount Vernon, 45-14. Centerville 2-0, won over Hagerstown, 16-0. Gamebridge City is 1-1, they won over Union County, it's 0-2. That final score was Gamebridge City 19, Union County 14. And Franklin County, with their 49-7 win over the Spartans, went to a 2-0 record. And the Spartans, as we talked about, are yet to win a ball game this season. This Friday night's area football schedule, Cambridge City at Lincoln at Tri, Union County at Knightstown, Shenandoah goes to Centerville, Indianapolis Tech visits Richmond. Saturday in the Southeastern Showdown at Lucas Oil Stadium, the Spartans in Greensburg and Rushville and Franklin County. So it's a busy week for everybody, and Spartans, I know, want to take on Greensburg. And yeah, I think the kids are ready, and you know, I've yeah. seen some good things at them, but we just got to still be a little more perfect and shoot ourselves in the toe every now and yes. then. Yes. Just don't seem to have the recovery ability at this point in time. So, but come out and watch them Saturday. You know, you can watch all four games for twelve bucks. So. Yeah. And we got the two morning games at twelve and two thirty, and then there, uh, South Dearborn and Baseville's playing at five thirty, and. Milan and Lawrenceburg's playing at 8, so $12 to take you a long way on Saturday. So. Again, East Central, the other conference member, is not playing because of? Well, they weren't in the conference, playing one of the conference school on the date that was open at Green at the Lucas Oil. There were only certain dates that they had open, and the date uh -huh. we could get there, they weren't playing in the conference on that date. So okay. They were playing a non-conference team, probably out of Ohio or Kentucky, if I was to guess. Okay. They so. go into Ohio, too. They wander over into Ohio. Yeah, I mean, the rules by... I, Bylaws from the state borders, you can travel 300 miles out. Okay. To play, so. Spartan's going to travel 300 miles. Someday. Not in the near future <laughs> right now. So. <laughs> You're not looking forward to that. Huh? I'm not sure we'd have that 
in our realm at this time. <laughs> We've uh, gone pretty far before. You you and Brett went somewhere one time and there uh, was we've a been rain in delay. Providence down at yeah. By Louisville, and we've been up, up by north, up Fort north. Wayne and mm. Prairie Heights, and yeah. so we've, of course, Huntington and West Lafayette, and so we've been around. But <laughs> I don't mm. think we're going to venture 300 miles outside the border. I think we can find enough good competition inside sure. the state line. So I kind of <laughs> like our schedule the way it is. <laughs> yeah, it's a good schedule. I don't think you want to get a plane and travel. Well, maybe you do. <laughs> you talk to the radio station about getting a plane. Be a far trip for. For the fans, I'm not sure how much. Yeah, you'd have to, you know, there are a lot of schools that are independent that travel and play all over. But mm -hmm. I'm not sure where they come up with the funding and the money to get that accomplished. But Right. So. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I suppose the winter schedules are all complete at CHS? They're on the schedule. Okay. So We're sending all that stuff into the printers here in the next couple of weeks. So So spring is next. Any Any changes that we should be aware of? Well, the girls are playing in a shootout this year instead of playing Cardinal Ritter. So uh, it's us and Decatur, us and Southport will play Decatur Central and Ritter. So we'll play one of them in the morning and the Southport will play the other school and then at night we'll flip-flop. So that's on this the first weekend that we played Ritter last year. Just mm -hmm. now instead of playing them in a single game, we're going to do a shootout. So but, uh, that and they picked up Hagerstown on the girls' schedule because we dropped Garen Catholic and we'll couldn't find a replacement for a long time, so there's been a couple, but not anything major. Mm -hmm. Boys' schedule's the same in basketball, and wrestling's still the same, and right. swimming's still the same, and gymnastics, we host them all, so. <laughs> when can they begin the official practices? Girls' basketball will be first, and it's October 21st, if I remember correctly. Okay. A little bit of a change in uh, boys' basketball in that we're going to Kokomo instead of Richmond. Yeah, that's true. We're not playing in a wedding, so yes. we're playing in the first annual Phil Cox. Mm -hmm. basketball tournament whether we'll go back or not we'll see I'm not really sure who the eight schools are at this time because when you try to read you can't only find six of them so <laughs> then <laughs> um, Rumble on the River is a, a different weekend isn't, isn't I that? think it's the last weekend the first weekend of January this right. year so it's the third and the fourth if I remember correctly so and it only seems like there was six teams in it this time you know typically there's eight to ten mm -hmm. so Maybe a lot of schools aren't wanting to travel and spend the weekends. You know, you got to drive down to Madison and stay there for the weekend uh, with the girls. So, but it's a good experience for our kids. So. I will mention that uh, opening night at Spartan Bowl with Union County is just 85 days away. I'm sure you knew that in the <laughs> girls' opening night. It would be uh, 20 days less than that. <laughs> <laughs> Math says 65. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Sam, you need something to do. I mean, <laughs> but it's nice to know that well, those are the days and they're ticking off. Uh, Coach Brown in the press box at uh, Spartan Field the other night, when he walked in, uh, he wanted to know how, how long it was. <laughs> so I have to keep the coaches informed. <laughs> Speaking of Coach Brown, we had an opportunity to talk to him at halftime during the football game. And uh, he's very optimistic about, about this season. And he also indicated that it, it looked good that the Spartans may host a sectional. Oh, we are going to host a sectional. Oh, good. So that's final. That's final. So Great. Uh, we'll host it this year. Then I'll go back to Greensburg next year. Then I'll be up for a realignment again mm -hmm. in two years. So mm -hmm. uh, get your all sports ticket because, you know, you may have to have a lottery. You never know. I mean, you got to give out. You had seven teams coming in, so you have to give so much to each of the schools that want pre-sale pre tickets. And then you got 5,100 seats in there. So, so all the schools... Decided on that. I was a little surprised that Greensburg gave it up so reluctantly. I mean, they're kind of the king there of uh, 3A until uh, a lot of negotiations year. had to take place. Oh, okay, I, we were wondering, or I was wondering, if you were making friends with all the other ads and yeah, everything we're all that feed into tight, the sectional. So. <laughs> but uh, you just gotta be, be politically about it. But uh, yes, I mean, we could have disagreed to disagree and let the IJSA sign it. Right, right. They put it wherever they want to. So, I know. That's, that's typically what happened at Newcastle because all of us wanted to host. And <laughs> so Newcastle ended up with all the time because we could never agree where to send it to. So, you know, well, we wanted, be great. Richmond wanted it. Anderson wanted it at the time. That would be late February so, and early March. And, right at the end uh, of February, 1st of March. So. Should be a good good time. It's been a long time since we've got to host one. Uh, right. Most of the teams are our conference opponents? All of them but East Central. Okay. So it's the seven conference schools minus... So the six other conference schools minus East Central, so Batesville, Franklin County, Greensburg, Lawrenceburg, Rushville, South Dearborn, and us. So it's uh, 
that's the same in girls basketball, same in baseball, same in softball. So baseball and softball dropped to 3A the last board meeting, so they'll be playing in the same sectional alignment. I think fans will be happy to hear that, Stan, uh, Sam, don't you? Yeah, I think so. Um, I think they'll be glad not to go to Richmond or go to Newcastle. Mm -hmm. um, however, I'm still of the opinion I'd rather play in 4A than 3A. Um, <laughs> I'd rather be the smallest in 4A than the biggest in 3A, but, yes, but that's, that's not that's, my choice. That's and right. That's just <laughs> Who knows, in two, two years it may go back the other way. It depends on, yeah, right. depends on the enrollments. And, and, and I think it makes it tough. It makes it, uh, have to make it tough uh, for the coaches, for the, for the athletic director, in that every two years you really don't know. Yes. And when you're right there on that bubble, uh, you know, if you were a little smaller or a little bigger, uh, you can almost guarantee you're going to not have to move. But, uh, so I don't know if it makes much of a difference during the regular season trying to schedule because you're only, you're only, um, and we play most of those schools. Well, we play all of the schools in the in the sectional anyway. But, but I know before in 4A we were trying to play all of those schools as well. Yeah, you try to find the people that you know are going to be in your sectional and get them on your schedule. Mm -hmm. uh, just because you want to see them before you get to the tournament time, right. but. Currently, it works out that our sectionals are conference schools, but I don't know if we'll go up or down or stay the same. I mean, we're not going to go down, but I don't know if we'll stay the same or go up. But it just depends on how many new schools are admitted into the IHSA in the next two years. So, you you know, and once you become a provisional member, you got to be a member for four years before you can participate in a tournament anyway. So I know we have at least four that are in their second year right now. So, you know, after next year, there's four new ones coming in as long as they continue to stay on the path that they're in. So. And they would be at the bottom uh, enrollment Just depend. In 1A you know, uh, there's one school that moved, <laughs> actually moved states. So uh, it was Ileana Christian, uh, which is up in the region. Or two years ago, this is their second year as a provisional member. And two years ago, they built a new $28 million school based on the kids that were coming to them. And obviously, they're Ileana because it's Illinois and Indiana, but... Their new school is now in Indiana, so they have to apply to be a charter member here after being a member of the Illinois Association for 70 years. So uh, they're trying to get in a little earlier, but right now they got to follow the same plan as everybody else. But hmm. so they were about 450 in enrollment, so just they're going to be on the borderline of the top 1A to the small 2A. So, but most new people, new schools coming in aren't coming in at the top. And uh, Mishawaka is going to go to one high school. So that's, or Elkhart's going to go to one high school, so that's going to change some things in Elkhart. So there'll be some that'll fold, and I know mm -hmm. some of them in the Hammond area are talking about consolidating as well. So uh, you just never know what will happen. Every school district is different in what their financial arrangements are. So we'll probably stay on the bubble. There's a good chance we're going to be on the bubble for, unless our enrollment declines, uh, you know, another 50 to 100 people, then you're probably a little more comfortable that you're going to stay in 3A or wherever, but. Well, we hope it doesn't. But, uh, well, we're, my I, line, I we're going to play see, wherever we're at. So. Right, but I don't want to see declining enrollments. No, I mean, you need to have our kids, you know, enrollment to get up. That's mm. that's good for our community, good for our school. So you never want to see our people moving out or not coming exactly. here. So. Sure. Well, there's another segment from the TV class out of CHS, and we'd like to show that to you right now. Good, Cheryl. Turn. For this season, I think it's going to go really well because we've improved a lot on our defense and offense, and we're working a lot better together. And we have a new assistant coach who is really good, and she's taught us a lot of new things. And I think that so far, our practices have been good, and I think the games will go well, too. I think our season's going to go pretty good. Uh, we're good on passing to each other and talking. Uh, we need to spread out a little bit more and work on getting our corner kicks in. But other than that, we're pretty good. Uh, I think this season we're going to do really good. We have good chemistry. Even though we lost like 11 players last year, I think we can come back and win most of our games and beat most of the people we beat last year. Um, I think this season will go well. We've improved a lot offensively, and we're a lot stronger through the midfield. We lost a lot of size, but we've gained a lot more offensive players, which helps us. 
I think our team is going to do really well this year because we've worked a lot with footwork and basic drills to get the basics down, and our teamwork has really improved from last year. Girls soccer and boys, both, both teams are struggling here early in the season, aren't they? Are they uh, they've, been real, new? they've all been real close games, too. Yeah. So yes. uh, We do have a lot of new younger kids on both squads. Mm -hmm. A lot of our boys are juniors or under, and a lot of our girls are sophomores and juniors. So just a couple spring seniors sprinkled in and out here on okay. both squads. So, yeah. But, uh, you know, it's a tough schedule we've played. Yes. The girls have been beat one to nothing and three to two and four to two, and the boys have lost one to nothing and shoot <laughs> out and, or a handball penalty. And Of course, we've had some canceled, so but uh, we'll get them around. Oh, oh sure. So. you got a good coaching staff. I mean, Mike Bottomley has been real successful with the boys uh, over the years. Yeah, Mike Bottomley and John Reynolds do the yes. boys, and then uh, Jeff Cooley and Zach Morgan have been doing the girls the last couple of years, and I, I'm going to space her first name, but Miss Boothman has been helping with the girls, and mm -hmm. she played on a junior national elite type team up in Washington growing up, and her husband's now the pastor at Baptist Temple, I believe, and or one of the new people at Baptist Temple. Mm -hmm. So she's in the community, and she's coming out and helping, and the knowledge that she can bring based on the experiences that she has is uh, very good for our girls. So. Sure. Yeah, they'll turn it around, I'm sure. They'll... Uh... They'll straighten things out here before long. Uh, I know it's fall, but Michael Thompson's working out with some baseball kids, is he? Well, yeah, this, uh, after September 2nd, we're in limited contact season, so the coaches can actually practice two days a week, two hours at a time from now until October 19th. So okay. they're out there, and if they're not out there, they need to be out there. But <laughs> I know Michael's also got a little baseball clinic or a little camp going on starting this week, and yes. uh, there'll be a lot of little kids out there, so, and that's good. So. Fall baseball is fun, I, as I recall. Yeah, it's, it's kind of baseball and softball be kind of come the old AAU basketball where they're maybe in playing too much, but uh, girls are playing 70 and 80 games in the summertime. It's just they kind of get tired of playing. So, But that's my own personal opinion. So, We need an update on the field house building. Uh, what, what well, they're putting a roof there? on, so come out and take a look at it. They got, once they get the roof on, then I'm sure and they're starting to block it up on the side. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, starting to take a little farm, a little shape, and starting to lay out some of the little rooms on the inside, but still hard to tell once you see it. But <laughs> once you stand over by the soft soccer press box, it looks pretty massy from that side. It doesn't look so big when you look at it from the west or uh -huh. from the north, but when you get to the south and look back up at it from the football thing, it looks pretty good. Oh, with the roof on it, uh, that'll help on inclement days. Well, I would hope so. <laughs> They've been up there trying to blow off water from this past weekend, I know. They have floor poured, or they do that after they No, nah, the they'll off. put it under the roof. Once they get the roof and the sides up, then they'll pour the floor. So, Still dirt right now, but making progress. Yeah. So, be a great building. I know all the coaches and, and you are anxious for it to be completed and, and put to work. Well, it'll give our kids an opportunity in the, in the cold, wet season to get some things done. Sure. We're, currently, we're trying to do that in a small gym at the high school. And, not always conducive to throw a baseball mm -hmm. or a softball, do batting in there. So tennis courts inside, too, will help. So we'll give our kids a place to hit in the wintertime as well. So just to be a matter of coordinating all that stuff so that everybody gets an opportunity in there. So, yeah. Coach hopes you sell a lot of $12 tickets. Uh, We're down to three Friday. days, so hopefully <laughs> there will be a lot of people coming in. So right. I know Franklin County is wanting to come up and buy some of them, bar, get some of mine because it doesn't wear. So, <laughs> you know, they had 13 left. I got 105 left of what we started with. So you'll so. share? I'll share if we need to because the more <laughs> tickets we can sell, the better right. off for all eight of us. So, Right. We try to tell everybody at the game this Friday night, it didn't matter where you buy your tickets from. If you're from Franklin County, you don't need them. You can get them <laughs> here because they're all going to the same pot. So. As always, thanks, Bryn, for joining us and uh, bringing us up to date on all what's happening at uh, Spartanland. I appreciate being here. Anytime we can talk about our kids and our athletes, that's, uh, that's a good thing for me. Thanks, everybody, for watching this edition of Spartan Sports Report here on TV3. Good night.